Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy of all of our praises. Oh, come and magnify the Lord with me, for he is good. Oh, come on, I said, come and magnify the Lord with me, for he is good. We're coming to his gates, we're coming to his courts with praise and thanksgiving. And we are to worship God in spirit and in true on today. Amen. Amen, amen. I want to thank all of you for being with us today. Some of you that are spreading out in the audience, some of you that are joining us via the Ether Waves on our Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. Thank you so much for joining us today for yet another installment of building bridges, not walls, here at the Springfield Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you so much for being with us on today. Amen. We have a day full of celebration, a day full of, of, of enjoying the Lord together. This is one of two services today. We would ask that you join us online again today at 3 p.m. for our installation services. Um, also, but to, this morning we've come to worship God together. Amen. The preacher is here. Amen, amen. The preacher is here, and he has a word from on high. But before he comes, before he comes, I want to just say to all of you that are in the building, thank you so much for allowing yourselves to be used by God, that we may be able to, to do what we do, and that is to serve the people of God. Not just in this area, but all over this country. We have not just physical members, but we also have um, virtual members that join us all over this country. So we want to say greetings to them as well. With that being said, with that being said, actually we will bow with bow for prayer and after prayer we will have our praise team come and they will lead us into worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, we give your name the praise. For this is a day that you have made and we come rejoicing to be glad in it. Now, Father, I ask that you would move in this place, Father. Father, we already know your presence is here. We felt it as we were coming down the road this morning, Father, that you want to do something amazing and incredible on today. So, Father, right now, we surrender ourselves unto you that we might be your instruments of your will, Father. Use us, Father, till you can't use us anymore. We are just vessels, Father. Though we may be broken, though we may be cracked, Father, I ask that you would pour into us, Father, but then before you do that, that you would that you would put us on your wheel, that you would shape, make, and mold us into what you desire us to be, that we may be able to be used for your glory. Today, we give you the glory for you are God. We give you the glory because you kept us all down through the years. We give you the glory because we understand that if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't say thank you enough. So this morning, we just say thank you, Father. We say thank you because this has been a long year, Father. We've been closed in for a year, but today, Father, the breaking of day has come, Father. The floodgates have opened, Father. Now, we ask that the flood, that the flood of glory would come into this place, that it would consume us today as we give your name the praise. For all these blessings we ask in your name, Father. Remember the preacher on today, Father. As he's come many miles, Father, remember him today. Give him what he needs, Father, that he may pour out unto us. Bless his church family. Bless his family, Father. And we thank you in advance for all these blessings we ask in your name we pray. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, praise team. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God a little praise. Hallelujah. We thank God for another blessing. Amen. Another blessing to see the sunshine. Another blessing to hear. Who heard that rain last night? It was a beautiful thing. So we just thank and praise God for all that he's done and for all that he's doing for us. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Amen. Back on, on the second Sunday, we normally um, observe our communion services. And so at this time, that is what we will do before this preacher comes and blesses us on this morning. When we, when we talk about communion, we say we do it in remembrance of him. Him being our heavenly father. Yes, sir. Him being Christ, the Jesus, Christ Jesus. Him being Christ who came down 42 generations that we might be able to have life and have it more abundantly. I know, I know we say that often that we come to have life and have it more abundantly, but what is an abundant life? An abundant life is one where we understand that God is by our side. Yes, yes, Lord. That God died for our sins. And in dying for our sins, he allowed us to have right to the tree of life. Yes. What is the tree of life? That's everlasting life. Yes. The fruit of the everlasting life are those things that we get knowing the promises that he's giving us knowing that when we leave this place we have a home not made by man's hand but it started at the communion table it started at that last meal that they had together when he got his disciples together he said to them that i cannot eat with you again until i eat with you in paradise he took the bread he said the bread which is represents my body i break it because I give my body freely for your sins. But not only that, he said, there's also a cup, a cup filled with the fruit of the vine that it represents my blood, which I shed for you. I shed it because I realized that in my blood there's saving power. I'm going to say that again. In his blood is saving power. I'm going to say it one more time in case you didn't hear me. In his blood is saving power. Power that can save all of us from a world of sin. So when we do, when we partake of this, that's what we do. We, we remember that he laid down his life willingly. That his blood was shed willingly. That we might be free from sin. So on this morning, so on this morning, as we are ready to partake of this communion, keep in mind that we do it not grudgingly, but we do it wholly. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, yes, sir. we thank you, thank you Lord. and we bless your name. As we were civil together, not just in this place, but throughout this country right now. We assemble because we're coming to remember you, Christ. For it's not about it being the second Sunday. It's about knowing that we serve a Christ that died for us. Your bread, which is your body. The cup, which is your blood. You shed it for us that we might be able to be freed from sin. You hung and died on yonder's cross that we might be free and have liberty in the Holy Spirit. So Father, right now we say thank you and we bless it. Bless this bread as we partake of it. For we know that as we partake of it that you yourself gave it up willingly that by our stripes, by your stripes that we are healed. Yes, yes, Lord. But not only that, your blood that still reaches to the highest mountain, but yet it still flows to the lowest valley. Yes, sir. It can still wash away each and every one of our sins. So, Father, today we lay at the feet of the cross as we partake of this cup and of this body. But as we partake of it, Father, we remember the pain and suffering that turned Good Friday, I'm sorry, turned Bad Friday into a Good Friday. But then we know on the third day you rose from the dead. And now we wait to sup with you again in paradise. But as Paul said, let us not be like many who eat and drink damnation unto themselves. For anything that's like sin, Father, we ask you right now that you would deliver us from it. Move it from out of our lives. Create us a clean heart and renew the right spirit 
and make us worthy to partake of this table. For all of these blessings we ask in your name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 On the night in which Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and said, This is my body, eat it. In the same manner, he took the cup. He said, This is my blood for the remission of your sins. Drink all of it. And they ate and drank, they went into the Mount of Olives singing to him. We don't have the Mount of Olives to go into, but we have a world to go into that we can still tell everyone that Christ is still alive and he still saves. Amen. Hey, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. I now have the distinct pleasure of introducing this preacher for the hour. He hails from Virginia, Hampton, Virginia, where he is the proud pastor of the Zion Baptist Church in Hampton, Virginia. He's married to Lady Kimberly King. They have five children. But he's also my friend. Known him for the better part of 15 years. Um, known him. In that 15 years, he's not only been a friend, but he's been sort of a mentor. I've sat back on the sidelines and I've watched him grow and watch how God has grown him at every level and every step of his life. And I often say this, that preachers and pastors need preachers and pastors to look up to because that's how we grow and that's how we become better. Amen. Uh, Amen. But this brother has been that to me. He has been a mentor and a friend. And I thank him for that. So it was very easy when we're trying to decide who I would have to come and, and, and be with us on this on this weekend of, of installation could bless us this morning. One name, Pastor Joshua King, Pastor of the Zion Baptist Church. This brother is not only my brother in Christ, but he's also my brother in the fraternal bond, and I thank him for that as well. Now, I'm a little older than him in that regard. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's how I little brother joke there. But I thank him for, for driving the miles to be with us this morning. So I know we're gonna give him a great big Springfield welcome. Um, praise team, if you got one more song for us, that'd be great. And after that, the very next voice you will hear this morning will be that of Pastor Joshua King of the Zion Baptist Church in Hampton, Virginia. Come on, Springfield, let's give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs>
to you and peace with God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor the privilege of being in the house of the Lord just one more time to this great pastor, great pontificator of the gospel, my friend, the uh, Reverend Jeremy Hudgens, to his beautiful lady. Amen. Come on, give me a pastor a hand. For Lady Huggins, to Tyranny and Zaria and Natalia and Taylor. 
to you, Springfield, for allowing me to come to all the officers, deacons, and trustees and members of this great church. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody said at the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll say that again. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is, he is, he is our Savior. This is my friend, and I just think it's a great honor to be here today on behalf of Lady Kimberly King and I. She's watching live on Facebook with me. She's a contractor, 26 years, retired Army, so she's still in uh, Virginia holding down Zion for me. Amen. We thank God for her today. Amen. Amen. We want to say congratulations to uh, my friend Jeremy and to Kayla. Man, the blessings of the Lord make rich. And they add no sorrow. What a great elevation it is for this man and woman of God who have been more than just friends. You know, you got to have someone in ministry that you can share with. And I thank God that you that you're real in my life. Uh, you are part of the tangible manifested presence of God for the King family. And we hate that we didn't get to have your daughter come to Hampton right outside the gate where I am. She went on down to Charleston. <laughs> we are the same. People home, people home. <laughs> but to God be the glory. Uh, and happy uh, early birthday to her today. Amen. Uh, don't know, I know that it's been a year we've been in this pandemic, but Springfield, can you just celebrate God that God sent you a shepherd yes, to be able to steer you through the storm? Yes, so many churches are closing. Here we are live on Sunday morning on Facebook Live giving God some praise. What a ram in the bush. And see, if you didn't know that you had a good pastor, you ought to know now, because now you've been in a relationship for a year, and all hell broke loose, and y'all still together. Yeah. So we thank God for that. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. I don't want to be before you long. I want to read a passage of scripture into your hearing, then we'll pray, and we'll ask the Lord to bless this text afresh for us today as we prepare to uh, preach the inaugural sermon for the installation of this great pastor. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter number 8. Mm. Acts chapter number 8 to my beautiful bride, Lady Kimberly King, baby, I love you. Thank you for your prayers. She is my cool glass of water. Amen. Acts chapter 8. Verse number Verse number 30, continuing to 38. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, saying, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired that Philip, that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and a lamb dumb before his shear. So he opened not his mouth. Uh huh. And in humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself? Or some other man. Verse 35. And then Philip opened his mouth. And began at the same scripture. And preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way. They came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said. See here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said. If thou believest with all thine heart. Thou mayest. And he answered and said. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. 
And when they were come out, 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 come out, out of the water, the spirit of the Lord called away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this time of fellowship. I thank you for this time of preaching and proclamation. I thank you for the safety of coming down the dangerous highways to be in this Bethel spot. I thank you, Master, for your provision, for your protection, and your perseverance. For all of us this week, there's been some high mountains and some low valleys. But our testimony is today, I know it was the Lord that had his hands on me. Now be with me, Master. Anoint me afresh. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, thou art my strength. And most certainly, you are my blessed redeemer. And I love you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. I need the old. I need thee in every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to And he went away and he never saw Philip again. I'd like to preach from the subject if I could just for a few moments. Pass the bread. All right. Yes, sir. Pass the bread. Yes, sir. All right. I remember when I was a kid, early on Sunday morning, there was two things that I would always smell going in the house. Some eggs and some bacon. And then I would smell those biscuits that grandma and mama used to cook. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? And, and, and I, I would be excited about sitting down at the table on Sunday morning before church started, listening to a little James Cleveland and the mighty clouds of Joe. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. But, 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 but grandma and mama used to fix those biscuits and they would be so, so soft and they would smell so good. And I, I would sit down at the table and there were seven of us, brothers and sisters, and I always had to sit at the end of the table. Mm -hmm. And I always asked my mama and my grandmama, why is it I'm always sitting at the end where the eggs is instead of where the biscuits are? Right. And you know, I don't know about y'all, but... I used to love to get that butter and put that butter on that biscuit and give me a little Cairo syrup. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Some Cairo syrup. You know that kind of syrup that it was so sweet it made the biscuit stand up on the plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and before you could get it, you know, you was already dreaming about it. As soon as you got to the table, you would sit down. They would say grace. And after a while, some folk wanted the bacon. Some folk wanted the eggs. But I would just sit Simply tell them, pass me the bread. Could I, can I talk about it a little bit? The bread, the bread, you know, the bread, the bread would fill you up. The bread would, would take away your hunger. The eggs and the bacon, it, it was good. But mama's and grandmama's biscuits, it was just something about them that made your soul jump up and down. And as I thought about what I would say to y'all today and to my friend, I thought about my grandmama's biscuits. And then I remember, I remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And if I come to tell y'all anything, I, keep, I come to tell you this morning, Springfield, as we come out of this pandemic and the church gets ready to open back up and lost souls will come from the east and from the west, from the north and the south, I come to tell you to pass the bread. And I talk about it. Pass the bread, pass the bread. We see in this text, y'all, we see in this text uh, that Philip has now 
uh, heard the Lord tell him to go down towards the road and there was something waiting for him. And I'm coming to tell you this morning, there's an assignment for you, uh, Pastor Hudgens. There's an assignment for you, Springfield, that there are some folk that are waiting down the road outside of the confines of these four walls, waiting for you to bring them the bread. Uh, are y'all going to talk to me? They've been in this pandemic a long time and, and, and things have been difficult for them and they need to know that Jesus is still living. He's still alive. He's still saving to the utmost. Somebody needs the taste of the bread that will never leave you ever hungry again. Philip yeah. 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 pulls up on the unit and what he saw, uh, Jeremy, he did not see a stranger. He, 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 he did not see an Ethiopian. No, he did not see any skin color. He did not see any economic status. He didn't see no sex, no title, no position, and, and, and no difference. No, he simply saw a hungry soul and an opportunity to pass the bread. Come on. So what he decides to do, he decides to become a spiritual hitchhiker. Somebody say hitchhiker. Now, uh, y'all know uh, a hitchhiker that it, uh, is someone that is waiting for someone to pick them up. But, 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 but the uh, spiritual hitchhiker is someone that's willing to hitch a ride for the gospel's sake. We often as a church forget that it's most important, what is most important about our relationship with Christ is that it should be duplicating what Jesus did for us. The 21, uh, 21st century context seems to be more focused on the inside of the fishbowl rather than the fish that have already been caught. Yeah. Our programs, our praise, our prosperity has become the new mission of the church while discounting and ignoring the great Christ commission. Go and make disciples. We're building bigger buildings, but God's presence is diminishing. We're adding more services but we're not capturing more souls. We're feeding those in the church while the lost, the left out, and the least of them outside are going hungry. We are shouting, dancing, singing, and preaching, but we're not reaching out to those in the street that have a hunger for the gospel truth. We're having breakthroughs and conferences which empowers those in the church but we're not doing street ministry, which leaves us searching the landscape for communities and individuals and helpless souls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're traveling the uncharted areas in our community, uh, but we're not traveling there to find someone that's looking for Jesus. Oh, yeah. We'd rather talk about folks and point out their uh, uh, side uh, things and uh, we talk about folks and pick on their religion. We pick on their earrings in their ear. We pick on the tattoos that they're wearing. But God is not concerned about what somebody looks like on the outside. God wants to know, do you have anything on the a normal normal hitchhiker desires to ride to reach a destination while a spiritual hitchhiker is one who seeks to help others become divinely attached to the kingdom of God in our text we see the perfect blueprint to follow if we want to become spiritual riders impacting people's lives one soul at a time Somebody say, pass the bread. The first thing we notice in the text, in verse 26 and 29, is that Philip minded his mission. Philip minded his mission. Uh, he was there to worship. And see, folk don't see uh, 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 worship as talking to someone about Jesus. They think worship is all about shouting and music. But worship is really uh, uh, putting out what you've taken in. And if you haven't took him in, it's impossible for you to put him out. And see, you can only talk about what's in you. That's why, that's why folks sometimes they get happy in church, but they hellish on Monday. Because what's really in them is not Christ. It's a bunch of mess. It's some folks that can shout the dust out the carpet. They can preach real good, but they ain't got no Jesus because when you see them down at the ABC store. I, I, I'm going 
going home, so we got to read it. Can I preach this thing like he gave me? See, when you got Jesus in you, you, you will mind your mission. One, you will hear P, uh, Philip heard the Spirit when he said go. He heeded the Spirit when he said go. And he honored the Spirit, so he went. And some of us too stubborn in the church now, we can only talk to folk that look like us. But can I tell you, in real ministry, ain't picking and choosing who you're going to talk to. Real ministry reaches down to the lowest valley and will talk to anybody. He minded his mission. That must be done. Minding our mission must be done through our ability to surrender and to share and to strengthen others. And that must be for the cause of discipleship. It is laced with obedience. Did you catch that? Which come from our willingness to move God and say that God is all that we need. All of us who love the Lord should declare like the lyrical poet Isaiah. Can I tell you what the first thing you need to know? If you're going to mind your mission, you better be able to tell God this. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I see? And who will go for us? Then said I unto him, here am I, God Almighty, send me. It, it, you, how you going to pass the bread if you haven't been sent? There's a lot of preachers, they wasn't called, they just went. But when you sit, God Almighty, there's a certain anointing about you. You, you know some folk can sing and then some folk can sing. When they sing, the Spirit of God falls on the church and somebody comes out of darkness into the marvelous light. Somebody say, send me. Send me to pass the bread. Send me to feed somebody's hunger. Send me. When y'all was looking for a pastor, y'all wasn't calling for somebody to come down here and look good. Y'all wanted somebody that was going to preach the gospel and tell the devil and tell it like it T.I. is. So the Lord said, who shall I send? And Jeremy Hudson stood up and said, Lord, send me. Ain't you glad? That God sent him down here to pass the bread in Springfield Baptist Church so what was empty could be filled. Yeah. Lord have mercy. We should be taking action to find new people to join and support our fellowship to rally the cause of bringing hope to the hopeless. We should be like Philip. Be ready to champion the process of reconciliation and reconcile the laws and paying attention to those who exhibit a desire to meet our risen Savior. Mm -hmm. The scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 19 states, and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Yes, Springfield Church, it's our mission to revive the sleeping spirits of God's people. It's our mandate to restore those who have been fallen away. Can I just stop and put a pen right there for a second? Why is it that folk got to put on airs to confess their sins in church? Why is it that we want to talk about folk when they get brave enough to say I fell down and I don't know how to get up? Why have we made the church a hostile territory and it's supposed to be a hospital for the sick and when the sick comes we got problems giving them an antidote to help them get wet. Why I got to hide my sin when I come to the church when the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God which means ain't no perfect folk in the church. If, if we got to understand that it's a transformative progress in the kingdom. You don't just up, jump up and be saved. It's a process. It is. It's that inner voice that leads us to know how, to know where and to when that he alerts us to be able to talk to somebody, to hit your ride with those who are seeking the gospel truth. When we obey the leading of the spirit like Philip did, 
It enables us to leave individuals' presence and leave them better and stronger than they were when we walked in their life. Yeah. Secondly, 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 uh, Philip minded the word. Uh -huh. He minded his mission. But he mastered the word. He mastered the context of the word. Mm -hmm. He mastered the, uh, the content of the word. He mastered the comprehension of the word. Not the ability to recite scripture, y'all, but the ability to retell, rehearse, and regurgitate the story of Jesus Christ. In other words, he did what Paul admonished us all to do. Not be on Facebook, not be on Instagram, not be on Twitter talking about folk, but he said, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed rightly, dividing the word of truth. Dividing here means to cut straight and to walk in. Therefore, we cannot pass the bread, y'all, when our lives are crooked, like a crooked road. Uh huh. And of course, we can't sugarcoat the truth, hoping to win popularity with people. We must tell it even in the ugliest details of the story of how the world would treat the redemptive Christ. The unit was reading the prophetic account, y'all. I'm in the book, check me out. The prophet in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 5, he is despised and rejected. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hide as it is our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him. And surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did not esteem him, smitten and struck and afflicted, but he was wounded. Good God Almighty. I ought to have some witnesses in here. And God took some beating for some stuff that you did. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. This is the part I like, y'all. And, and the chastisement of my peace was upon his back. Somebody ought to be able to go out and tell somebody, it wasn't me that brought me over the dangerous highways. It wasn't me that took cancer out of my body. It wasn't me that helped me not die of high blood, blood, blood pressure. It was the name of Jesus. See, see, pastor, why you passing the bread? Be careful of the people that you let stand behind this sacred desk because some folk don't want your, they don't want to be your friend. They just want your platform. Be careful how, 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 how you ignore certain people because, because they don't look like you or think like you. You got to be careful of the folk that you let inside your close space with God. You got to be able to tell somebody, I know I look, I look good now, but can somebody holler at me right here? I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> If I look like what I've been through, I would look like a hobo from off the street. But I thank God that the blood washed me as white as snow. Look white as snow. Notice verse number 35. The Bible says he expounded on the scripture, meaning that he explained with careful and elegant details of the suffering of Jesus. Uh -huh. He left no details out. He did not add anything. Be careful how folks think that they got to add stuff just so folks can get saved. Ain't y'all glad that God's grace is different from man's? Folks got to have a church meeting to give somebody grace. Can I, can I, look, there's this lady, right, in the church. Old lady, she was the oldest mother in the church. And the preacher was preaching one Sunday. He said, ain't you glad that God uh, 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 protects you from your enemies and the church was going crazy everybody jumping up and down except for the old lady he said ain't you glad that God make your enemies your footstool the lady still sat there she ain't got up yet uh, lady Kayla she just sat there and nobody everybody else is just praising God but the old mother just sat there <laughs> and then finally after church the pastor asked her he said mother why is it that you wasn't jumping up and down when I was preaching because uh, I'm sure God took care of your enemies. She said, well, Pastor, one of these days I'll tell you. So Sunday, he tried to embarrass Mother. He said, Mother, come on up in front of the church and tell us why you ain't shouting 
about God taking care of your enemies. Uh -huh. Took about 10 minutes to get up to the front of the church, Pastor Jeremy. She got up to the front of the church and she said, well, Pastor, the reason why I don't shout about my enemies no more because they all dead and gone. God, I done outlived all of them. And what you're saying, Pastor, I'm saying that the death the, the devil tried to put on your life, the blood of Jesus has made you outlive it. And so you ought to be able to tell somebody that the Lord touched my life. The Lord lifted me up. The Lord made a way out of no way. You ought to be saying that he saved those who are lost. And if he did it for me, he can what? Talk so. Okay, I got to go. I've been here too long. Look, you got to know the story of Jesus. Because here it is. It's nothing nothing wrong with quoting uh, uh, Reinhold Niebuhr. Nothing wrong with quoting Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great gospel preacher, or Karl Barth. But you better know the story of how the Savior bore your sins, bled for our redemption, and was buried for our resurrection. Tell the story of how his blood has washed you, and the water sanctified you, and gave us all liberty from sin. Listen. Listen to how Jesus put it. You got to tell the story. Jesus said it like this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive and the recovering of the sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Somebody say, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better learn how to pass the bread. Why are you in the grocery store at Walmart? Pass the bread. Why are you standing at the teller machine getting you some money? Pass the bread. Why are you in the barber shop getting your hair cut? Pass the bread. Why y'all ladies sitting two hours in the in the in the in the salon and your appointment was at six and it's now eight thirty? She still got you sitting there with your hair wet. Pass the bread. Pass the bread. Pass the bread. The story of Jesus is a marvelous masterpiece. Woven by the great I am. God among us. God in us. And God for us. Anointing us. Helping us. It's a spectacular story because it does not end with his death. It moves progressively in our lives even now. That helps us pass the bread to others. When we hit your Holy Ghost ride with the Holy Ghost. In every single aspect of our lives, y'all, just like Phillips, we should be looking for somebody to hit your ride with and to pass the bread. We got to walk it out. We got to praise it out. We got to worship it out. But no matter what you do, you got to pass the bread. As I come hasten my way now to the close, he maximized uh, his mission. He, 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 he mastered the story of Jesus. And lastly, the church will learn how to maximize its moments. He maximized his time. He maximized his technique. And he maximized his tools. Look here. Uh, can I just tell y'all, you don't need no gimmicks to get folk to come to church. If you preach the word, the word of God said, if I, if I be lifted up above all the earth, I will draw all men. Do I have anybody here to know that right there? That he will draw all men unto him. We don't have to have no chicken dinner sales. Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have to have uh, half naked women dancing on Sunday. Y'all ain't gonna talk about it. We don't, we don't have to have men uh, 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 trying to go around and do things they ain't got no business doing with the women in the church. No, all we got to do is learn how to live. The name of Jesus. We gotta maximize our time. Can y'all? Can I just tell y'all? And I'm, I'm, I'm about to leave y'all. That me and Zion, we do church different now. You know what I found out about this pandemic? That we had a whole lot of stuff going on that Jesus didn't have nothing to do with. 
It don't take all day to have church. That's right. We're set. Can I? We're set at a ball game when it go in overtime, but don't want to stay in church hour. Especially if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, y'all waiting for y'all waiting for a win. Did y'all hear y'all got a new coach? By the way, he's from China. Y'all, any Cowboy fans in the house? Any Cowboy fans on the line? Look, they got a new coach. You know what his name is? He's from China. His name is Win One Soon. We doing things in the church, y'all. We got more programs and stuff, and ain't got nothing to do with God. We got this day, we got this special day, this special day, this special day, that special day. God ain't concerned about that. He wants to know is anybody getting saved? When the people come to church, they want to know is there a word from the Lord for my soul today? The church has become so stiff and rigid. We're often trying to get people to conform to steps that are not included in telling the story. We set criteria for classes. We put other hurdles in their place. Uh, we, we don't allow God to maximize the moment in our worship. We have programs, presentations, PSAs, and we have stuff. And then put on the bottom of our program, program subject to change if the Holy Spirit show up. How the Holy Spirit going to show up on your program? Yes, sir. Can I close it? Can I close now? It amazed me. Folk would rather have a program than a prophetic move of the Holy Spirit. I thank God that Philip did not let nothing stand in his way of doing ministry. I know it was hot on that dusty road. Like it get hot in church sometimes. You be sweating yourself out, but that shouldn't hinder you. He didn't, he didn't let the, the position of the unit nor the language barrier. Here it is right here, y'all. Y'all do realize that that was an Ethiopian yeah. and Philip was a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. Yet, like on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, I believe, allowed P uh, 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 Philip's Hebrew tongue to speak Aramaic. Yeah. In other words, when we mind our mission and master God's word, God will endow us with gifts that we cannot imagine to reach people that we will uh, come into our path and we will be able to pass the bridge. In verse 37 and 38, we see Philip uh -huh, taking the advantage of what's available to him and, 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 and to complete his assignment. Notice the first thing that he did was he posed the question in Acts 37. And Philip said, if thou believest in thine heart, thou mightest, and he answered, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Can I just put a pin there and tell you that the church needs to learn to start asking the question, are you saved? We want to know who they're sleeping with. We want to know where, 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 what they're doing on their job. We want to know where you got your dress from. Oh, dude, that's a bad suit. Where you get? No, we need to ask folks, are you saved? Next, the unit spots a muddy pool, y'all. And Philip seized the moment, not allowing it to pass. You got to understand that the moment was not just for the eunuch. Can I just say that? It was about the whole company that was traveling with the eunuch. Philip knew it was not just about one person, but he knew it was about everybody that's watching. That's what goes on in the church. That's why you got to be careful of what you do in the church because people are watching the church. And if the church don't get it right, then they're going to act crazy. Yeah. Want to know why your kids act crazy? Yeah. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Sometimes they take on the same behavior. We don't want to admit it. We used to act just like them. And what makes us mad is that we be looking at ourselves. If that's you and you're a parent, you on this live, don't, don't, don't look at your child. Don't raise your hand because they sit right near you or they somewhere in the house. They might see. Yeah. Yeah. Philip knew that it was more than just watching. It was more about transformation. And after the bread, y'all, 
come to water because you know water washes us water cleanses us and water quenches our thirst pastor we all we all know that too much bread and no water can make a meal unenjoyable Mm. It'll make you choke if you eat too much. Anybody ever been eating some bread? The bread got really good, but then you got you started looking for the for the glass that has some water or something in it because the bread was a little too thick and it needed something to soften it up to go down. Yeah. That's what the water, too much water and not enough bread will leave you empty. Over after the bread gives us life and the water comes to give us sight. We have new eyes to see God's glory, new eyes to read so we can tell the story, a new walk so that we can do it by faith and not by sight. In John 6, 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The songwriter said it like this. How to reach the masses, mm -hmm. men of every birth, mm -hmm. for Jesus gave the key. Yeah. If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and not doubt the word that he said. I will draw all men unto me. Mm -hmm. Pass the bread and then take them to the water. Y'all are going to talk to me. After you have passed the bread, uh, uh, passed the heavens, I'm so glad that it's been a year now. And I imagine that you have been passing the bread. How do I know? Because I, I, I see some of the signs when I'm watching on Facebook myself. I hear the praises going up. And if the praises are coming on up, then the blessings are surely coming down. Somebody said, pass the bread. Not only on Monday, pass the bread. Not only on Tuesday, pass the bread. Not only on Wednesday, pass the bread. Not only on Thursday, pass the bread. Not only on Friday, pass the bread. Not only on Saturday. Pass the bread not only on Sunday. Pass the bread three, six, five, seven days a week so somebody can say, For God I live and God I die. Pass the bread, y'all, when you're sitting at the stoplight. Tell them about Jesus. Pass the bread when you're in Walmart and somebody's showing out and tell them peace. Be still. Pass the bread, y'all. When nobody else wants to come to church, stand outside and pass the bread. Pass the bread. When you go to your mechanic shop, pass the bread. When you go on your trip on a boat, pass the bread. When you're inside of the store and you get something to eat, pass the bread. Pass the bread, Pastor. On Sunday when you're baptized, pass the bread, Pastor. When you're down at the funeral home, pass the bread. Because if we pass the bread, we can lift our eyes to the hills for which coming our help. All of our help comes from the Lord. Somebody say, pass the bread. Pass the bread. Do you understand? Y'all ain't got it yet. When I pass the bread, if I'm passing the bread, what I'm really doing is passing Jesus. Somebody ought to shout right there. And if you pass Jesus to somebody else, Jesus will pass himself to you. How do I know? Because I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply, staying within, seeking to ride no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairy cry, and from the water, he lifted me. Save am I, past the bread. How can I pass the bread? I don't really 
have it. Huh? Yes, you do. Huh? Because on Thursday, huh, they beat him huh, all huh, night long. Huh? On Friday, huh, they hung him huh, on an old rugged cross. Huh? They hung him high huh, and stretched him wide. Huh? Nailed in his hands, huh? nailed in his feet. Huh? And they pierced him huh, in his side. Huh? But this is what huh, the bread will do. Huh? The Bible says huh? they pierced him in his side, huh? nailed in his hand. Huh? What they forgot to do huh? was to sew his mouth shut. Huh? Because he said, Father, Father, huh? forgive them. Huh? But they know not what they do. Huh? He died, yes he died, but early, 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 on the third day, the preacher got up with all power in his hands, saying, yeah, yeah, keep on passing the bread, Jeremy, in the dark, in the winter, in the fall, in the summer, will be a light in the community. I'm glad, y'all, that I can come and tell somebody pass the bread. Pass the bread. Pass the bread. Because if you give them Jesus, you've given them more than enough. Uh -huh. You give them Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fisher, uh -huh. the fisher will become a fisherman. Uh -huh. And they'll be able to feed themselves. Pass the bread, Springfield. For a year, y'all been passing the bread together. God is not through with you yet. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Yeah. Neither has it entered to the hearts of men, for God has a store for this church. What a blessing, y'all. I'm just an old preacher. Mm -hmm. I believe that Jesus saves to the utmost. And if we could put him back in the middle of our worship, of our praise, of our churches, in our lives, if we just pass Jesus to one another, we could be able to save this world no matter what color they are, where they come from, how bad they've been. Jesus will save us. Father, we thank you for our time today. I pray that somebody's been touched. I pray that, Father, you keep this pastor strong. Keep him passing the bread of Jesus Christ. Keep him passing the bread, God, because while he's passing the bread, you have to give it to him before he can pass it. Strengthen him by your might and by your power. Yeah. Give him all that he stands in need of. Bless his handmaiden. Give her, oh God, a touch of fresh anointing that she may minister to her man of God and to the women of Springfield in a way that they've never seen it done before. Crown her with Solomon's wisdom. So that she moves in and about. Then when she opens her mouth, she will be passing the bread that will give life and give life more money. Bind Jeremy and Kayla together like a three-ring cord. You, them, and the Holy Spirit. And as they celebrate this time, this church, as they come together as pastor and people, I pray, Master, that you would bind them together with the fresh oil of your Holy Spirit. Keep them in the hollow of your hand. Keep us all, Master. And remind each one of them on the live and in this church that, Master, there's only one visionary. And that visionary is the pastor of this church. Help the leadership and Jeremy to be on steady ground together. Unify their spirits so that they will have the spirit of the saving grace of God. And when all is said and done, 
Let the words of their mouth and the meditation of their heart be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are their strength and their redeemer. And we love you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what we're going to do here at Springfield Church. We're going to pass the bread because we understand there's a world out there that's hungry for the word of God. And so that is exactly what we are going to do. Amen. Amen. Our motto here is we build bridges, not walls. And that's how you pass the bread. If you build walls, you're keeping it in. But if you build bridges, that gives you an avenue to go out and pass the bread. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to my friend. And I got to throw this little plug in here. That's how we do it at Virginia Union. Amen. 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 I didn't mention that whenever we were introduced to him, but you know, I'm over on the list of greatest seminary on this side of heaven. Um, seminary with Proctor School of Religion at Virginia Union. Amen. 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 Uh, matter of fact, um, it was a he, he does not know this, that inspired me to go there. He, I, think, I never told him that, but now you know. Amen. 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 But thank you so much for being with us on today. Come back and join us at 3 p.m. God bless you. God bless you. Come back and join us again at 3 p.m. Live again. We will have our official installation service at that time. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, I am so excited because God is already in this place. Amen. Have you been blessed on today? Yes. Amen. 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 I think God has got some more blessings in store, so come on back, come on back and join us this this evening at 3 p.m. Um, and we will we will definitely um, be blessed again um, at that time. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, join us again at 3 p.m. Do not forget to join us on Tuesday night and Wednesday night for our Bible study and our prayer room. Amen. Of course, every Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. This is our prayer. We will see you at 3. Amen.